This is a follow-up video to the overview video that I produced a few months ago. So if you haven't seen the first video, click the link up in the corner and go check that out. It has chapter headings that will take you directly to whatever part you want. You don't have to watch it in order. It is a longer video, but it is intended to be comprehensive for those actually considering using this and giving you the information you need to decide on whether this machine is right for you. I'm assuming that since you're here on this follow-up video that you've already watched the video, maybe you bought one and you want more information, maybe you're considering it and you want more information, and this is some follow-up after using the machine. I got a question on the comments about, does this machine put humidity into the room? And I responded unequivocally, no, it does not. It absolutely does not. I've noticed nothing. And then I thought, well, maybe I should do a little experiment and find out. Note this experiment is got a lot of variables in it, so it's not a scientific experiment. It's just going to see what happens. I have a thermometer here that also reads relative humidity of the room. It's saying 37% right now. There's been some variation on that this morning. And for reference, it started out at around 30 to 35% humidity in the room when I got up and started making breakfast. It didn't vary a whole lot while making breakfast, maybe a percentage or two. And then I cleaned the stove afterwards. And when I cleaned the stove, it popped up to from 35 to 45% when I was spraying my simple green cleaner on the stove to clean it and putting aerosols into the air. Just this simple spray bottle in the vicinity of the stove caused it to jump up 10%. And when I'm done cleaning the stove and getting all the grease off, I take a glass cleaner, a spray foam glass cleaner, and I clean it to get the last soapy residue off of the stovetop porcelain portion. And this bumped it up to 53%. The aerosols in this can shot that humidity up almost 15%. It's down to 37% right now, so that's what we're gonna use as our baseline. I was hoping it was going to be down to 35% or 33% again back where it started, but it hasn't gotten there. I'm also going to be doing dishes in the kitchen, which may affect the humidity. That's an unknown, so it's not, again, this is not a controlled environment, so there's some variability. And it is still morning, and I'm going to run about a five hour cycle on the machine. And with that, we know that the general humidity is often higher in the morning, so we may see a drop in humidity because of the general humidity of the environment dropping as part of the normal process of the day, especially here in Southern California. Those are our, all our variables. I don't know what we're going to get, but let's find out. I'm going to do a full wash of all the bed sheets on one bed. This is three queen-sized flannel sheets. I'm going to do a steam wash, which is going to take about two hours to wash and rinse. And, and then it's going to dry. And because it's three queen-sized sheets, I know it's not going to dry completely. So that means I'm going to do three additional 30-minute cycles for each of the single sheets after that. So we're looking at six and a half hours of operation time to see whether this changes the humidity in the room. And I'm going to check in periodically at various points. You might ask, why do I have three sheets on my bed? A bed only has two sheets, two queen size sheets on a queen size bed. Yes, there's two sheets on the bed. And then I have a third one that I cover up the pillows with because I have my cat sleeping on the pillows all day and that collects the cat dander and the cat fur and I'm not putting my face in the pillow full of cat dander and cat fur at night. When I go to bed, I peel that off and I have a clean pillow underneath. And the cats get to sleep on the pillows all day long. So it's, it's a win-win for both of us. But that means three sheets to wash when I change the bedding out. normal steam and normal dry. It's gonna be about four hours and 48 minutes or maybe longer. There we go, four hours and 48 minutes. 
And uh, we'll come back in a couple of hours. It'll be about two hours. It's usually the steam cycle is about an hour. And then the additional rinse and wash uh, will be the second hour. So we'll come back a couple of times to check in at those two points and see what's going on. We're a little more than an hour in. We're still on our steam wash. We haven't completed our steam wash. And our thermometer has stayed pretty consistent. It's been pretty much 37% the whole time. It only just recently dipped to 36%. When it started the load, it was hovering between 37 and 38. And now it has just dropped to 36 and it's back up to 37 since I walked in the room. Probably my body is exuding enough humidity to affect the thermometer. We're now on the spin cycle, rinse and spin. We finished our rinse, we're just going through the spin cycle. We're at two hours and 55 minutes to finish the cycle. The humidity is now down to 34%. So the room is stabilizing and it's pretty clear so far, this machine is not putting any humidity into the room. We'll see what happens with the dry cycle. All right, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe it does generate a little bit of humidity in the room. Our humidity temperature gauge is now up to 40% and it seems to have been drying for about 40 minutes. So we've gone from, I'll have to check the video on what we were, but we're at 40% now humidity. And I think we started at 37. We dipped down a couple percentage points and now we've bumped back up. But that's also right here, right next to the machine. I'm gonna get a different uh, temperature and humidity sensor and put it in a different location of the room further away from the machine and see if there is a difference in other parts of the room. I have another thermometer in another room two rooms away, and it's also 41, 42% in the house. And then I looked up on my weather app and it says it's raining outside. <laughs> so the general humidity outside has jumped up to 36%. So that's also could be a factor as to why the humidity inside the house has increased. Because I forgot to check on my app uh, earlier this morning when I started the thing, but I had checked before I started it, but I didn't do it on the app, that it was something like 21% humidity outside when it was 35% humidity inside. So we can't attribute that humidity increase to the dryer because it could be relative humidity from outside. All right, the machine just finished its dry cycle. Let's look at our humidity reading. It says 40% humidity. We started with 37, 38, and this is attributable, I think, to the general fact that it's drizzling outside all afternoon and the humidity in the atmosphere went up and it's not attributable to this machine. I've got another device over here by the sink and on the other side of the room, it is 49% humidity. It seems like there's more humidity coming off of the sink. It's got a sink full of dishes than there is coming out of this machine. So I think it's pretty safe to say that this machine is not changing the humidity in the room, not at all. And I think it's safe to say that the humidity and moisture is being pumped out through the machine and turned into water and sent out through the back drain the same way that it flushes out water for the washing portion. I'm going to do my normal cycle here because I said this was five hours to do all three. I'm going to pull them out. They're not going to be dry enough. I'm going to let the moisture evaporate. We'll see if that changes the humidity here at all when I open up the door. And then after they've sat for a little while, I'm going to send them through one at a time for each another 30 minutes because that's how I found they get dry the best when I have an oversized load. The machine can't get three queen size sheets dry when they are all in the machine at the same time. This is the older one and usually the older one, the one that the cats sleep on, is the one that has the more moisture in it. And the newer ones are a little bit more dry. As one user online says, just shake it out and the humidity goes away like magic. It kind of does. This one's a little more moist. Yeah, it was just a little bit too tight in there. But like I said, shit, let's see what happens. Shake it out and the humidity goes away. That's really interesting. Still a little bit of moisture there, and I'm still going to send them each through by another 30 minutes by themselves. I'm going to let the machine 
cool down for a bit first, and then we'll come back to that. I waited a little longer than I planned. The rain has stopped. It's now down to 35% humidity in the room. The one over by the sink is down to 43%. And on the, my phone, it says the humidity is down to 32%. So that corresponds about a 4% drop outside, a 4% drop inside. That, uh, that seems to make sense. I don't think that was just the machine cooling down, but we're going to find out here. I'm going to put in one of these with pillowcases and give it another 30 minutes. Turn off the spin and go. And we'll check at the end of that to see if that 30 minutes produces any extra humidity. I doubt it will, but we will find out. All right, it just finished its cycle. We are at 37. We were, I think a second ago, we were at 38% humidity here. It's about 34% humidity outside. I think it might have gone up a little bit since the start of this load, but this load is done. This sheet and bed pillowcase are dry. I'm going to put that one off to the side and get this other one going. One, two, three. We're nearly done. One more load to go. We're holding it at 34. When I walked into the room, now 35% humidity here. So we'll do the last sheet. I don't think there's been any evidence that the washing machine and dryer are actually putting humidity into the air. I think the fluctuations that we've seen are just natural fluctuations of humans interacting in the space and the atmosphere interacting with the house over the course of the day. Let's see what the uh, humidity outside is. One more time, we're still, we're holding at 36%. So right now we're 35% indoors, 36% outdoors. We're pretty solid. And over there at the sink, I think we are 43% closer to the sink because the water from the sink is evaporating into the air. As we wrap up this video with our little test about whether this thing puts humidity into the room, I think I've come to the conclusion that it does not which is where I started with the whole thing. It's uh, holding here at 36, 37% humidity right next to the dryer. It's been pretty much that all day long, 36, 37, 40 in that range while it was drying. Maybe it was down to 34, 33 when it was only washing. It's also been a humid day. We had a few showers throughout the day. And my other point of reference is that over there at the sink, I have done dishes and when I was doing dishes, the thermometer with the humidity gauge over there shot up from 43% to 63% while I was doing dishes and putting moisture into the air. And I come back now to finish this video and it's up to 68% from the dishes I did maybe 15, 20 minutes ago. So the dishes evaporating moisture into the air in the dish drainer are creating 10 to 20% increase in humidity at that location, whereas this device has really no noticeable humidity change from our test. I can't determine that these fluctuations were actually from the dryer function because of the other factors. I think it's safe to say this thing does not put extra humidity into your room. I think if you had a vented dryer and you were not venting it outside, 
but you were venting it into the room itself, that's going to put humidity into the room. But this is pumping all that moisture out through the drain, sending it to the, to the sewer drain or septic tank or a gray water system. It's going to pump that water out through the drain and it's never going to come into the air, into the room. If you'd like to see a different humidity test, one that doesn't have the unexpected variables that we encountered today, make a note in the comments. If you have something specific you'd like me to try, let me know, I'll see what I can do. Obviously, this wasn't a highly controlled scientific experiment, but I think we got believable data out of it. Mm -hmm.